Like when we're talking about having a communication strategy, what we're really saying is we want you to communicate with intention, with purpose, so that people can respond based on what they're hearing, what they're reading, what they're seeing. Hey everyone, welcome back to season two of the Church Circle podcast. We are covering in a range, a wide range of topics in this season, whether it's giving, whether it's uh, outreach, communications, whatever that may be. And this week we're really diving into social media and communication specifically. Um, and I, we have a, we are blessed as as a organization as Church Circle to be to have access to Church Media Squad and the team there and so who better to get on the show than Kelsey Moore who is the director of social media the social media squad there um, to kind of talk to us a little bit today about communications and how it can impact and ways to to better your communications at your church so Kelsey firstly thanks for joining us thanks for being here and it's uh, it's great to have you on the show absolutely I'm excited to talk some communications today yeah it's gonna be good I've heard you speak before and we've we've had a few uh, meetings before you've joined and you've you've made some really good comments and some, some good thoughts so I'm excited for everyone else to hear those things today um just so people kind of know a little bit more about you kind of what's what brings you to this point in this conversation today is kind of what's your story what's your what's some context behind the scenes that brings us to now Absolutely. So yes, like you mentioned, I'm the director of Social Media Squad at Church Media Squad now. And I've actually worked in communications and marketing pretty much my whole professional career. Uh, But I love my story because I had no idea that that's what I wanted to do when I went to college. I was completely undecided. And it wasn't until I started serving with my campus ministry that I found a passion for communications. And I was just, you know, like anybody serving in in a ministry was given the role of the publicity coordinator was the title. And, um, you know, I started to find that I really enjoyed thinking of creative ways to help spread the word about our ministry. Not not a lot of people knew that we were there. (laughs) And I thought, you know, if people just knew that we were here, I think they'd really love this. And as I started, you know, thinking of all these different uh, creative ways to communicate, I thought to myself, you know, I wonder if we have an advertising major here on campus. And uh, through that, I discovered that we actually had a journalism school and I got a degree in public relations and I absolutely loved it. I just felt like I found my fit and uh, right out of college, got a job in marketing at the YMCA. And uh, it was great. I finally got to like put my skills into practice. And then after that, we had a huge marketing restructure, which led me to work at a commercial real estate company, which I never would have imagined (laughs) that I would have worked at a commercial real estate company because I think deep down in my heart, I knew I wanted to use my gifts for ministry. That's really where it started. And so I worked there and thinking like, what am I doing? at a commercial real estate company doing marketing and communications. Um, But really, I learned so much there. My supervisor really helped me grow. And after that, that's when the Lord opened the door for me to work at my church. And it was so cool to see how I got to use all the skills that I learned in that job (laughs) to to translate that into my church job. Um, And so I worked at my church as a digital strategist was my title. And it was kind of funny, but um, the communications director at the time said, you know, I'm I'm saying that 2020 is going to be the year of digital. And so we're hiring someone to focus on our digital communication. (laughs) And no lie, I started my job in February of 2020. And then in March of 2020, we went completely digital. And um, it was such a crazy time because it was really tough, you know, what was happening in the world. Mm -hmm. But it was really cool for me to get to use my gifts and my passion to serve people through this digital online ministry. And so it was really cool. I just felt like I was able to walk in my gifting and my passion and to help serve people during a really hard time. Um, And so throughout my time on my church staff, I was able to do more than just digital communication with learning how to help just create communication campaigns for all the different things we were doing and things like, you know, our service announcements and writing and all of that, all the stuff that I love. And so last year, the Lord opened the door for me to work at the squad. And so here I am today getting to partner with churches and helping serve them in their social media. And it truly is an honor to get to do that. I love the fact that you have so many different avenues that you've pursued or or kind of uh, avenues of experience that you've you've had and and experienced over this time one of the things we have on this podcast i've noticed is a lot of the guests is that they have um these different experiences whether it's secular or or church world Mm -hmm. and and all of those collate into being where they are now and there's not you know especially when we when we look at church relevance there are a lot of crossovers particularly when you look at as an organization there's a lot of crossover in, in how things are run, how things are uh, strategy, that kind of thing. 
quite often when we as creatives working in the church we we assume that the the secular relevance doesn't have any meaning at all really into what our, our secular experience has no relevance to the church but actually it's right. um it can have a lot of crossover and then that that kind of leads Absolutely. up to this point right where you're now you're now not working for a church but for churches through the church media okay. squad it's like the bridge of those two things coming together. So you can kind of see how God works in those things. And it's only when you look back, you go, oh, actually, the, I now know why I did this and why I did this. And now I know why I'm here. And um, it's, it seems to be a repeating pattern, which I, I really enjoy. Because I think quite often in, in our seasons of life, we look at some of the things we're in and think, God, why do you have me in this specific place right now? And then you can never, you can never know where, that, where that's going to take you. And I remember like the same for 2020. I remember when I was working at a church in 2019, I had I um, was was moving as planned to move to America, so I put my resignation in in September. And I remember saying like, "2020 is going to be a, a huge year for the church." I'm so excited about it, and I had this feeling that 2020 was going to be this, this big thing. I had no clue what it was actually going to be, but I had this preparation in my spirit about okay, there's something to be expectant for. And I think like you know, it's same for you landing in in February 2020. And then this baptism of fire, <laughs> suddenly working right. out how the new church looks in in all of the, the mess of COVID. So we all we all go through those seasons where we expect one thing and it turns out to be a different thing. And we gain experiences from places we didn't expect to gain experience. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, in terms of in terms of communications, this is kind of a little bit off off my topic of questions. But how does for you, how did specifically did your time at the commercial real estate firm, how did that kind of help, um, kind of develop you into, into being a better church communication strategist? Yeah, that's a great question. I, um, you know, I was still pretty young. My, my first job out of college, you know, I was 22 and I was just thankful that they trusted me because I was very excited to do this because a lot of my job and my first job was social media. And so of course, you know, the young people love social media. That's kind of how it was, but I actually, you know, studied and practiced this in my classes. So I had a little bit of that marketing and communication foundation going into it, not just kind of like messing around on social media by myself. Um, and so then when I got into this new role at the commercial real estate company, I had a level of professionalism. So, you know, my first job was at a nonprofit and it was definitely, there was professionalism there, but it just kind of like stepped up the game in every way and learning how to communicate with my colleagues, you know, learning how to communicate with clients and other businesses in our community, because that was one of my, my job, part of the job was for me to go around to different businesses in the area and basically create a community resource so that people would want to come and work and live in this area. And so um, I really stepped out of my comfort zone in a lot of ways. And I look back and I'm very proud of myself. Um, I probably wouldn't have done it on my own. I had to really credit my supervisor who pulled out all the best in me. She really challenged me to be a better writer. She challenged me to be a better strategist. Um, she allowed me the opportunity to lead projects that I didn't think I could lead. And so this is kind of a testament, especially if you're a leader, to continue to pull out the best in people. Uh, because all of that professionalism, all of that experience, I the, the words you said were just so perfect. I looked back at, because in that time I was thinking, what am I doing here? This is so not part of my plans. Um, but then I look back and I just thank God that he gave me that opportunity um, because it's cool, not just for me on like a personal development level, but I got to use those skills to help my church. Like how, what better than to be able to use those skills yeah. for the church of God. And then now I get to apply that to many churches. And so I am so thankful for that experience. I couldn't have, I might not have said that in the moment, but, um, you know, I can definitely say that now. Yeah. The power of empowerment, I think is, is a cool, is a cool thing. And it's one of those especially if you are a leader and I guess you're kind of having to deal with this now as well in terms of being the director of social media, having people uh, work with you. Um, really? There is that the element of, there is some, some fear in releasing control, but that's right. really where people step up. And um, uh, it's encouragement to me as well, because there's been many times in my life where I've wanted to kind of relinquish control of things and, and hang on to them. And actually, it's about it's about giving and and letting letting God do what what only He can do, and take things to places that we could never take it on our own. And in that in that sense of um, letting God work in ministry, quite often communications is 
very um it's like there's a there's a, a it's one of those things that's very easily put down on on a list as like a this is something you can learn it's a there's a strategy there's a way of doing it um in terms of church communication strategy is that the same thing is it is it easy to develop a church communication strategy is it something that 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 needs that is very secular driven is it something that um god is involved in or god cares about i think i guess what i'm saying is like for a church what are some of the fundamental elements of church communication strategy is it something that is prayerfully considered is it something that's just as easy as this is what's trending on instagram at the moment or is it a combination of those things what would you say to that oh i love that and i love how you phrase that because i've been thinking about this and i think about it often too is that you know are we taking you know what's secular and applying it to the the christian world or the church is that is that wrong you know and i think just in my experience it is just that it's taking the principles and applying it to what makes sense in the context of the church and so not i i realize that not every church is going to be able to hire someone on staff to do to solely do communications and especially not everyone's going to hire someone who has a communications background like I did you know that was my mm-hmm. passion and I'm thankful that I was able to do that and I'm able to do that in my role now but that's not the case for many churches they just know like oh we probably should post something on social media or we should probably send out a newsletter about this. And so I I really do think about that. My heart goes out to churches when you say the word strategy and there's no one there who knows how to create this professional, you know, communication strategy. And so I first want to just almost reframe strategy when it comes to communications as intentionality. Like when we're talking about having a communication strategy, what we're really saying is we want you to communicate with intention, with Mm. purpose, so that people can respond based on what they're hearing, what they're reading, what they're seeing. And so I do think that there are ways for churches to develop a communication strategy, even if you don't have that experience. And I want to do my best to help set you up for success with a few tips uh, that I think that almost anybody can do, even if you don't have uh, church communications uh, staff members with communication communications experience. And I would say probably the first thing to do with any strategy is to set some goals. And even that I just think can sound intimidating, like, oh, how do I set a communications goal? And I'm going to make it, like I said, as easy as possible. Most often than not, your communications goal is going to be to start with your church's mission. What is your church's mission and your church's vision? Everything you communicate should be pointing back to that, or at least use that as kind of a checkpoint or a filter. Is what we're communicating supporting who we are as a church and what we believe God has called us to do in this community? And if it does, go for it. Communicate that. And if it doesn't, maybe we shouldn't spend our time and energy on that. And so I find that that's one easy goal to start with. And then another goal I would say is what's happening in the life of your church in a certain season. So you might have some seasonal goals. Do you really want to point people to get involved in community through small groups, through Bible studies, things like that. And that would be your focus is community during a certain season. Um, Do you really want to encourage people to serve? You know, that could be a goal is what, what the heart of serving even means. What does it say in the Bible? And that can guide your conversation. And, and if your church does sermon series, that could even be an easy way to set those seasonal goals. Like what are, what are we talking about as a church during this season of our church? And so you can kind of make sure that during those time frames is what we're talking about, reflecting what our goals are, either holistically or seasonally. So that's what I like to start out with is goals. Um, and then after that, I think the next point is identifying your audiences. And I know at my church, we used to joke about this because we would say, well, our audience is everybody. <laughs> you know, God wants us to reach everyone, every nation, every tribe, every tongue. And so um, one way that you can help make it a little bit more specific is by simply looking at who's in your community, what demographics are represented in, in your community, what behaviors are represented in, in your community. Do you live in a college town? Do you live in a very artistic community? community. What are some things that you can identify as your community? Then take a look at your congregation and see, is your community reflected in your congregation? If not, maybe you could reach out to the gaps, you know, the the people Mm -hmm. that you're not seeing in your congregation. And if so, then let's see, like, how do these types of people or these behaviors communicate? Do they like text? Do they like email? Are they on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? Are they on Facebook? And so just by simply identifying those audiences, 
choices, you can start to communicate more you know, intentionally because when we know who we're talking to, we'll know what to say and how to say it. So those are two of my first uh, steps. And starting this co- effective communication strategy is knowing what your goals are and then identifying your audiences. And then once you have those two things, you can start to build a more strategic plan. And, you know, one of the things I would recommend for a strategic plan is simply creating some sort of content calendar that says, okay, you know, during this month, this is our focus. Maybe it's based on events that are happening during that time frame or a sermon series that's happening during that time frame. Maybe it's what's happening in the world. You know, are there certain holidays or seasons that, you know, we notice people are going back to school even, you know, we're going to pray for teachers, things like that. So, So um, just start with the goal, identify some goals, identify your audiences, and then start creating a plan based on that. And that's kind of the high level, because when you start to get more granular in the details, that's going to change based on your community and on your resources. So um, I like to say, don't necessarily compare yourself to another church, look to other churches for inspiration, uh, but your community and your resources are going to be different and that's okay. So start with those high level kind of strategic things and then start to think about the details after that. Spreading your church's message can feel overwhelming when you're short on time and the right words escape you. That's where Church Media Squad's Social Media Squad comes in. They'll take your vision and craft scroll-stopping content that reaches your community with the gospel. From writing engaging captions to handling all of your posting, they act as your dedicated social media team so you can focus on ministry. Ready to save time and reach more people for Christ? Learn more at churchmediasquad.com. Yeah, it's great. Great thoughts. I think the the part you said about being mission led is so important. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the the modern church's problems can be solved by just making sure it aligns with the church's mission. Because the the when I asked that question originally, I said about being prayerfully considered. It's you can you can check that box, or you can say that that this was prayerfully considered when you align it to the mission. Because the church's mission is always. Um, a download from God. It's always something that is being that the pastor or the or the congregation feel is the way the church is being led to go, and and the the, the place the the mission field of where the church is supposed to be. And so there's a, there is a spiritual alignment there. And so when you say, okay, let's so let's get the social media strategy and let's get the communication strategy on board with that mission, everything's pointing in the same direction. And that's exactly like that's exactly what people want to see as well when they go onto so onto the social media platform. They want to see the church. What, what it actually represents. And I think social media is quite often underrated as a, as a way of representing a church's values and a church's mission just by imagery, just by uh, the photos that are used, the, 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 like you said, like writing and copy, like all of those things help us as the, the user on a platform to go, hey, this is what this church is about. And therefore I'm going to make a decision whether I want to attend or want to be part of it, want to give to it. And it all points to that same mission. So that's, that's a great thought. Um, and also that, that what you said about... Um, about just having a plan and having um, goals as well. I think that's important. Uh, anything that I've tried to do in terms of social media that ha- didn't have a plan went horribly wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. so having a having a plan and being consistent with the plan, um, even if it's, this doesn't mean that everyone has to post seven times a week, right? Or have the same strategy. Right. Like I said, it's not about comparing, but it's about taking inspiration. Mm-hmm. And so if we can just start to, to do something sustainable consistently, then we'll have a much better results because we, we're getting ourselves out there. We're making sure we're, we're, we're putting the right content out, the content that aligns with our mission, and we're doing that on a consistent basis. We're going to build some momentum there. On that note, how can churches use digital platforms, particularly social media, because I think that's one of the biggest kind of talking mm-hmm. points of today, um, to enhance their outreach and engagement? I think the, que- the reason I asked that question is because I think the church for, has been doing in-person engagement for for millennia right for thousands of years but the church hasn't necessarily done digital engagement for that long so there's always new strategies there's always new ideas um how for someone who maybe has very little experience or is learning that sphere how can they use digital platforms to enhance their outreach the first thing i would say is we live in a digital world we communicate digitally and it's important for us to embrace that because 
we we can't look away from it. We are a digital communicating world. I don't really send a whole lot of uh, new like written hand written letters to ask people what they're doing on the weekend. You know, um, I text them. I send things on social media. I send emails all the time. And so I think it's important for us to realize, yes, this is the world that we live in. So it's okay to embrace it and communicate digitally. And my heart goes out to churches when it comes to social media too, because I've been working in social media for almost 10 years now, and it has changed so much. And you could easily have a full-time job managing one platform if you really wanted to, just because there's so much that you can do that it can often feel very overwhelming, especially if you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have someone on your staff that you know, knows how to do social media or wants to do it. But I do think that there are simple things that we can do that almost anybody can do as long as you just identify somebody to do these things. And so the first thing I would say um, when it comes to social media, just it's a perspective of social media is a resource that we are just to steward well, just like we do with anything that we have within the church. And I think when we have that perspective, it can make us feel a little bit more confident going into it that we don't feel like this, oh, I got to post something on social media, but rather like, how can we steward this resource well to reach people within our congregation and our community? And then I think it opens up the door for you to say like, okay, let's start thinking about some ideas now. And so just some general thoughts. Uh, the church, like you mentioned before, is it's the people. And so as much as you can show faces, show faces, um, especially within the social media squad, we see that photos and videos of people are what really connect. And um, when I talk about things like engagement, people liking and sharing and commenting on on post, what I focus on is not, oh, we got a lot of engagement. We're so cool. We're going to go viral, but rather engagement shows us that this is actually connecting with someone. And so we see people connecting with videos. We see people connecting with photos. So we're lucky that we live in a time where pictures taken on a smartphone are great. You know, you can take pictures and videos on a smartphone and share that on your social platforms, especially Facebook and Instagram. Those do really well. Some other things to keep in mind is if you, um, if you do record your sermons to have sermon clips, 30 second sermon clips perform very well. Again, it's not necessarily about just getting a lot of exposure as it is representing what your church talks about week by week, you know, and just connecting with people in a very real way. Um, what I love about the sermon clips is that, you know, you think about people on social media, they're often seeing all these things. Some of it's very negative. Some of it's very divisive. Some of it is just like crazy. <laughs> um, but then they, you know, keep scrolling and they come across a video that's talking about the hope of Jesus. That's talking about the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus and the love of Jesus. And we as a church have the opportunity to interrupt the feed with something not just positive, but life-changing. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've had churches tell us that they've had people come to church because of what they saw on social media. So this is impactful. It's real. It's happening. And so if you have the ability to take 30-second clips from your sermons and post them, even just once a week, I think that would make a huge impact. And if you're not sure... You you know, what, what section do I post? Um, I always try to look for a really strong hook, meaning, you know, your pastor or the speaker has said something that really kind of catches your attention, or maybe they start with a question and keep the video on the shorter side so that people try to watch all the way through and don't kind of get lost on there. But that's another one I would say, you know, your photos and your videos, your uh, sermon clips. And one thing I've been seeing work well on Facebook, believe it or not, is short quotes that have no photos, mm -hmm. no graphics. I mean, you wouldn't believe that's such an easy way to get engagement. And so if you are listening to your sermon and your pastor says something really great, or even just a scripture that really was like the focus of that sermon, you can grab that scripture or grab that quote, put it on Facebook, no photo, no graphic, and you've put something on there that people really are going to engage with. It's really cool to see that. And so um, those are some specific ideas for that. Another one that I love is Instagram stories is such an easy way to connect with people. 
people, I know that I'm often looking at my Instagram stories more than I'm looking at, you know, the feed sometimes and even like responding to people. And there's all kinds of fun. They're called stickers on there where you could add little emoji sliders and emoji buttons. And that's just an easy way to engage with people. You can post a question box and ask people, you know, what was your favorite point from this sermon this week? What Bible verse are you reading right now? You know, things like that. There's little simple ways that we can engage with people on Instagram stories. And again, what I love about that for the church is that you do not have to have some overproduced video or photo to do it. You just grab a smartphone, uh, take a photo, take a short video, and, you know, add some text on there all within the app. You don't have to have Photoshop involved. You don't have to have any video editing skills. I mean, you could do so much within the app that you probably do need a video editor sometimes, but, but the good thing is that you don't have to, and that really connects with people. And so keeping it very simple, very authentic, just focusing on the people, focusing on the message. And that really goes a long way. That's great. These are, we've got so many practical tips right now. Uh, We'll have to produce a, um, a list after this of just all the things that you yes. said that people can download because there's so many good like practical pieces of advice now i want to kind of flip it a little bit because we're talking about authenticity and making th- like if someone's taking pictures on their phone you know, they can be a, a little bit rough around the edges at time and then this is this is also there's i think most churches will find this not only do they have a main instagram or facebook page for their church but they also have maybe a kids ministry one or a student ministry how do you especially for a volunteer or for a church staff member, maybe a smaller church, how do they keep track of this kind of stuff and and maintain clear and consistent communication without kind of one pulling their hair out because there's just so many things going on, but also just making sure that, that everything is, is pointing back. Like, like we said in this at the beginning of this, like pointing back towards the mission. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that students doing that kids are doing that, especially when you think there might be volunteers involved, how do you balance those things and, and bring it all together? Absolutely. I know that this is something that many churches experience. And uh, so I think it's a great question to talk through. And there are probably a few different ways to do it. And one of the ways that specifically I did this within my church is I created what's called a communications style guide. And, you know, it's not anything super fancy. It just had all the information that people needed to communicate with what I love what you said, consistency. And so there are certain things about each of our churches, certain phrases that we use, certain words that we use, um, certain tones that we use. And, um, you know, depending on your church and, and how much uh, resource you have, you know, you may even have certain photography styles that you can define. Uh, but if you're just getting started, creating some sort of guide that you can share with anybody, anybody who's on staff, anybody who is volunteering so that they're communicating as similarly as possible, not to uh, not reflect the personality type of that specific ministry, but to make sure that, again, it sounds unified, that this doesn't sound like now it's a complete completely different ministry or different church. No, we understand that the youth ministry is going to have a slightly different feel than, you know, the main church accounts. And same thing if it's a women's account or an outreach account, they're going to have a slightly different tone and that's completely fine. But if you want to make sure that they're pointing back to the same mission and vision, like we mentioned before, and that they're using the same type of language when we're talking about some of the core things at your church. And so a great example of that at my church, we don't say volunteer volunteers, we say servant leaders. And so we don't want people saying the word volunteer, not because volunteer is a bad word. That's just not the word we use. And so it's not great to have that inconsistency because that's not also not clear. And clarity and consistency goes a long way. And, you know, speaking and communicating to someone with intentionality, again, through that, we're able to explain why we say servant leader and not volunteer. And so it's almost like a discipling moment. And you can do that with anything at your church, the way that you speak, any words, phrases. Um, we went even so far as to write how we write dates and times because, you know, I have a PR background. So of course I'm going to do that. <laughs> and so I'm not saying that you have to do that, but if you are able to identify that, it just makes it a lot easier for people to know. And, um, you know, so that if you do have someone who is kind of in charge, charge of communications overall, they can do little check-ins and say like, Hey, I noticed that, you know, you use this word instead of that. And so it's just an easy way to keep everybody, 
you know, in the same, you know, in line again with consistency in certain things, but not being, not being able to share your personality for that specific ministry. We realize that that's going to be different, but that is one way. And then just spending time with people to train them up in that, you know, maybe we, I know at my church, we also had kind of communication champions on each team. And so maybe there's one person who can serve, you know, even if they're not on staff with the kids ministry, one person who could serve with youth, one person who can serve with outreach that can kind of help filter some of those things through to make sure that there is that consistency. Um, and, and that's pouring in from the hub of whoever is kind of leading those communication efforts. I think there's nothing wrong with getting specific. I think quite often, like, especially when we start to involve volunteers, we can kind of feel bad for maybe like mm-hmm. getting too specific and putting too much pressure on them. But that's, mm-hmm. I think that comes when we start to like, we expect that they know what to expect. And I think things like coming up with these style guides, coming up with plans and just some kind of like pack that we can hand to someone and say, Hey, this is for you to look at, learn, understand. Um, and this is so that we're all on the same page so that we're not getting caught in these, these little details that aren't important to us serving the mission. It's, it's, I think one of those things that, um, I wish I did when I was a communications director is just focus more on the, the being proactive and on the easy wins, the low hanging fruit first, and then you, when you're getting into the, the, the nitty gritty and you're, you're getting the work done, you're going to have less of these small issues pop up and get in the way than, and then you can start to tackle the big things. Mm-hmm. I think there's, these, these are always the small things that cause, can cause conflict between volunteers and, and leaders as well of just, oh, they said this, but I thought it was this way and they've handled mm-hmm. it badly. And like, if you can start to eliminate some of those things before you get to that point, that's just helpful for everyone. So not only is it a helpful tool to just get bring the the messaging in alignment and, and share that unified voice on social, but it's also a great way to just be a better leader for your your team and to to minimize conflict in a healthy way and to it to increase uh, communication between staff members in a healthy way. Um, that kind of leads me to the next question. As we've got a few more minutes here, okay. is um, with volunteers and congregation. Obviously, you can keep adding and adding and adding to communications. There's always a new social platform to be involved right. with. Like you said, there's, there's photography, there's videography, there's Facebook admin, there's YouTube comments, there's all this kind of stuff. So there's lots of avenues to get congregation and volunteers involved, but what's like, what are some of the best ways or maybe best approaches to start doing that? So let's say you've, you've got a team of one or two people in the church right now, and they're looking to mm-hmm. open up uh, a YouTube live chat on a Sunday um, mm-hmm. and they need a volunteer to do that. How do you start implementing those things and start to build without becoming overwhelming? Yeah, that's a great question. And I often think about this, you know, sometimes it is hard when you're uh, working in communications at the church because some of the roles that you want to invite people in to serve with, you, you know, you, they are specific. You do have to have a skill set to do graphic design. You know, you do have to have a skill set to do video if you want to serve in that way. But that doesn't mean that those people aren't there. There are potentially people in your congregation who would love to use their skills to serve in all of these areas. And so my first recommendation is if you notice a need, um, sit down and identify the areas where you have a need. Where do we really need help? Do we really need help monitoring our YouTube chat? Do we really need help writing sermon descriptions? Because no one on our team's really got that skill set and we, we want to do it. We want to be really intentional about it. You know, do we really need photographers? There's nobody to take pictures, nobody to get, you know, footage for Instagram stories on Sundays or events. You know, kind of start by identifying the need and then ask, <laughs> you know, just simply ask people. I think that sometimes we don't want to ask people because we feel like we are burdening them, but we're actually giving them an opportunity to walk in their gifting. And sometimes it's like they're calling to serve yeah. the church with your gifts, you know, and we're withholding that opportunity from them because we feel bad and we don't want to ask. And I just always think about there's a man at our church who loves copy editing. He loves to edit anything that we will give him, you know, he's a linguist. So he does grammar. He knows all the rules. And if he doesn't know it, he's going to look it up and make sure he gets the right, as close to the right answer as possible. 
And it is his honor and pleasure to serve in that way. And when we ask him, he is so honored. And I just think about there's so many people like him and like me before I ever was on staff with my church, I served. It was an honor because I enjoyed doing it Mm -hmm. and I loved my church. And so, you know, I think that first, I just want to encourage everyone that there are people who are going to want to serve in these areas. And we just need to ask, we need to present the opportunity. So that could be, you know, depending on how you communicate now, that could be sharing something on your Instagram about it, Instagram stories, uh, posting on Facebook or whatever, and um, sending it out in a newsletter. If you have an email that you send out weekly, you could share their serve opportunities. Uh, depending on how you do announcements on Sundays, you could share it there. If you have serve or volunteer fairs at your church, you know, represent it and say, hey, we want people to serve with communication. So that would be my first step is to identify the need and then just simply ask and then create easy opportunities for people to serve. So the example that you mentioned with the the YouTube chat, you know, that's another uh, serve area that my church has. And so what we particularly did was we created a guide and we would send it to them every Sunday. Of course, you go through the the initial training of, okay, this is how you serve uh, as a YouTube moderator. And uh, we're going to give you everything that you need to say And we're going to give you the staff members email or phone number so that if something comes up that feels too big, you know, you can reach out to us. And so that's a really specific example, but you, you train them. Like once you've identified the need and created an opportunity for people to serve, you give them solid training and then you let them do it. You just like we were talking about earlier, we can do this with um, the people who serve in our church, not just staff members that we lead, but, you know, congregation members that we lead that we can say, okay, I'm going to let you do this. Of course, after they've had some training, we can sit right there with them and then we can let them come to us with questions and with feedback. Uh, But there are often opportunities that they'll identify, you know, they love, or at least at our church, they love to share feedback in a, in a positive way to help us be better. You know, it's just another set of eyes. When you're on staff, you are so overwhelmed <laughs> by so many things. And so there's just so many benefits that can come with that. And I think that there are specific opportunities within communications that feel like it's hard to let go because, it, you know, if someone posts something wrong on the chat, it could look bad on your church or, you know, it could look bad if they post something on social media or, you know, if they drop your photography equipment, it's really expensive. So, uh, you know, it can feel intimidating to let go in, in some of those ways. But I think if you train and prepare them well, it's worth it to, to take a slight risk, you know, and uh, give them the opportunity to walk in their gifting and to just serve and open up the opportunities. Because let's say you, if, if someone can't serve in that area, you can't have a live YouTube chat. Well, now you can because you opened up the door to let somebody serve. And so yeah. I think it's just taking a look at everything that you have, identifying places where people can serve training them well and then being available for them if they need help it it reminds me of like there there was a conversation me and ron starling had last season about getting people into your team and how to approach doing that and it made me think like that you never know giving someone the opportunity you never know where that's going to lead them on their journey with god and sometimes it can be the okay i I don't want to do this again and i've i've now narrowed down what my calling is and it's not going to be that but sometimes it really is like it's a springboard for them to go into something that that is even beyond what you're doing now and and i can think of three cases like the team that i used to be on back at my home church it was like five of us and Mm -hmm. three of those people i know for a fact are in either helping out at church or in communications in some form as a career and they just started off volunteering and it's that kind of thing of like they we they we identified the person Mm. they were approached or they approached us wanting to be involved we gave them Mm -hmm. the resources and equipped them and then now they're doing great things all over the country um only because that there was this moment where god could we could give them what god wanted to 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 do in their lives and we could equip them Mm. and to the best of our ability and god can do the rest and I think I would say to anyone who's listening, like don't underestimate what you can present to someone that could be a springboard to, to take them into all the great things that God has for them. And, um, I think that is the, that is that there is an element of risk there. Like you said, like there's always that, what if, what if they damage this? What if they do this? But that's all part of growing as a kingdom of God and as growing as the church is that we go beyond just ourselves and trying to control everything. And we actually let the body of Christ rise like raise up and and all of us work together to keep building the the kingdom of god and 
And I think there's a beauty in that. There is obviously we're humans, we're flawed, and there is failure at every corner. But that's why we have a God who makes up the the difference. And um, and I think as an organization, we are the strongest organization in the world because we get that we have something that goes the extra mile. We have someone that takes us to the to the next level that we could never achieve on our own. So right. it's it's a great thought, and I, I it, it makes me excited about the potential that even this podcast can have to to equip mm-hmm. those people in church to start doing those things and, and raising up. Uh, like you said, servant leaders. I love that term. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we, we're nearly at time, but I wanted to see if you had a hot take when it comes to church communications to see if we can um, ruffle some feathers. Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't know if I have necessarily as much of a hot take, but I could probably get up on a soapbox and talk about this for a while. And that is that your church's commu- uh, your church's impact is not measured by how many social media followers you have, how many people know your church's name, or how many YouTube subscribers you have, but your church's impact is measured by the lives that are being saved and transformed in your community. And the reason why I want to say that is not because all of that doesn't matter. I obviously believe in it. I believe that social media can be very impactful in the church and that communication can be very impactful in the church. But what I don't want is for anyone to think that if they don't have a lot of followers on social media, or maybe their homepage on their website isn't super clean as they want it to be, or maybe they don't have a professional photographer, that that doesn't mean that they are not making an impact on the kingdom of God. And it all goes back to what I said before, which is that social media and ultimately all of our communication channels are a resource that we are to steward well. And so when we do that, just like you said, we trust God with the results. When we have done everything that we can do with the resources that we have in this season of our church, we trust God to take the rest. And what I love about the church and the kingdom of God really is that we operate in a different economy because, you know, the world says, oh, you need to be going viral. You need to be getting this number of likes or this number of shares or else you're not successful. But if you share a video and it gets two views and one of those is someone who decides to go to the go to church for the first time in years that is success in the kingdom yeah. of god and i love that we get to operate differently where we don't you know fear oh my gosh our numbers are down this month or you know, things aren't where we want them to be on social media or on our website or on our YouTube, but that we can use those things and look to them as, okay, how are we making wise decisions and being a good steward of it, but not become crushed by it? Because then we're not focused on our mission and our communication efforts have become an idol and we don't want to do that. And so be smart, be a good steward, but don't let it become everything to you. That was more of a conviction moment than a hot take, but I think it's much better. It's, right. It is that way. Um, no, it's it's great thoughts, and I I think it go, it works both ways, right? Like it's not just like the, in the small things; it's also in the big things. It's like if you have ten k followers or twenty k followers of church, and there's no there's no discipleship happening, or is there's no there's no clear funnel to getting people close to Jesus, then what is the point? What is the point of the reach? What is the point of the viral video if it doesn't do something that brings someone closer to Jesus? So it works both ways. And that's why I call it a conviction moment because it is encouraging for the smaller church, but it's also convicting for the larger church. He goes, actually, maybe we need to reassess. Does what we produce align with our mission? Does it align with our values? And does it ultimately point people closer towards Jesus? And is it is it a, a like you said, a ministry tool or is it a notice board that's just there to pump right. just information? Or is it actually something that, that's yeah. going to bring life change? So yeah. Kelsey, great thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if people want to get connected with you and want to know more about um, what you do or what the squad does, or even just kind of have someone to throw some ideas out or ask some questions, what's the best way to get connected with you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Feel free to reach out to me. It's Kelsey.more and definitely check out the squad Instagram. Our squad has been creating some real templates on Instagram. And so it's a great place to look for inspiration ideas. And those real templates make it super easy for you to share share some photos and some videos of your church. So it's another great place to look at for inspiration and ideas, like I mentioned before, but yeah, feel free to reach out. I'd love to chat with you. Well, there you go. I hope you all do that. And uh, I hope you guys come uh, to the next episode of the Church Circle podcast uh, as we kind of fire away through season two. And um, if you've enjoyed this episode, leave a rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, comment, whatever it may be, just to kind of increase our uh, our engagement and also just to to introduce us to new audiences as well. If you have someone in your church that you know would, would really benefit from hearing this, send it to them 
and um, and then we'd love to hear your stories as well so whether it's Kelsey DMing Kelsey or messaging us on Church Circle let us know um, kind of some of the things you've implemented that have made a change in your church we'd love to hear those things so thank you so much for listening thank you again Kelsey for joining us and we'll see you guys soon on another episode of the Church Circle Podcast Church Circle